Yo, what's going on, everybody? Uh, sorry, I messed up the way that I um, scheduled this live stream. In other words, I forgot to schedule the live stream. So I'm going to have to kill a little bit of time at the front end of the podcast because I screwed up. But it is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois, and it's time for another live stream. Today is Tuesday, October. Is it the 3rd? October 3rd, 2023. And uh, for everyone coming in, sorry that I forgot to... Um, post the uh live stream thing ahead of time i meant to do it i'm running late this morning i went for my run i was supposed to be on a call the run went long i missed the call then i went to the grocery store and i was gonna before i went in the grocery store schedule this thing so that way when i got back from the grocery store i could just sit down and join you guys but then i forgot to do all that oh it's just been a crazy day um yeah, but I'm so glad for all of you guys that are here. Thank you for making it here, even though I kind of messed things up. But we're here now. For everyone listening on the audio version on the podcast, it's all invisible to you guys because you're you're still getting your regular audio podcast the same way. So hopefully you didn't notice any disruption and you're just having a good run out there today. Although it is hot. It's still very hot here uh, in uh, Crystal Lake. I think it's going to be hot till Thursday evening. Then during the middle of the day, it should rain, and then it should cool down. So it's hard to believe that it's going to be perfect marathon racing conditions on Sunday. And it still might not be, but right now that's what the forecast is showing. Um, but it's hard to believe that that's how it's going to be based on how hot it is here right now. It still feels very much like summer. We had the air conditioning on yesterday. I think we talked about that. But uh, if you're out there running and listening to this, hopefully you're having a nice, cool run. And if it's hot, hopefully it's, at least it's a safe one. And for everyone watching this on YouTube later but not live, welcome back to the number one place to find consecutive days of unboxing shoes that are under 140 grams. Because we got another package here today. I think it's a very lightweight shoe. I believe that its weight is 139 grams. Wait, how much was the Adidas one? That one was like 139 grams. This one, maybe not under 140, but it's right around that 140 grams territory. It's a very lightweight shoe. It's one that we've talked about a little bit here on the podcast, on the live stream. I've been thinking about getting it, but once I saw what the weight was, I was like, and I, I had this uh, Evo 1 come in yesterday, I was like, I knew I had to have this. So I reached out to the brand and they were able to hook me up. All right. So let's see who we got here uh, in the chat. Calvin says, you know, I was worried, getting worried for a sec there wouldn't we have a live stream. I know, that's my fault. Sorry about that. But I'm glad you're here. Mark Peterson says, hey, here we are. One last day of miserable heat and then fall can actually happen. I think that you guys, maybe it changes a little bit earlier for you guys in Minnesota, in Minneapolis than it does for us here. We're still, we'll still be hot till Thursday. So we got two more days of this. Um, all right. Eliza's here. She says, yay, live stream. Hi, co-fam. Uh, David Sachs says, hello, everyone. JC found it. Um, Cyriacus also found it, too. And Louis says, yo, what's going on? thought there wasn't going to be a live stream. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys are here. Thanks, thanks for believing in me. Uh, Stephen Lung says, the SC Elite version 3 on Sierra for $80. Pineapple color. Just picked up a bear. Huh. I don't know what Sierra is. Is that a is that a rep you know that's the thing there's so many places to put your credit card down on the internet these days i'm always nervous has anyone had experience with sierra before cool maddie max said this is the best podcast for filling out my work receipts yeah nice i like that i'll i'll, I'll use that one for tomorrow hopefully i'll remember it um all right kurt steege is here what's going on kurt says yo co-fam kurt are you coming this week are you going to be in chicago uh, Video Guy Man Seven says, "I'm getting into town on Thursday. I'll take anything that is better than this Florida heat." Yeah, it, it by Thursday evening it should be nice and balmy. It'll still be a little on the warm side, but cooling down. Friday is going to be chilly though. Nice. Uh, Frank says, "You know what? It looks like you hit the paces in the Evo at any rate." Yeah. So I took the Evo one out. Let's talk about it. So I took the Evo one out for a run today. I think I probably used up half of its anticipated lifespan maybe more uh, I have some thoughts on the lifespan thing but so I took it out for a run today and it's not really a workout I mean I just I did a run that wasn't a workout rest necessarily I literally put it through paces so I did about four miles at marathon effort two miles at threshold and then four 5k 400 meter repeats 
So four 400 meter repeats at 5k effort. So marathon threshold and 5k pace. Um, yeah, the shoe is very fun. Um, I'll have a lot of thoughts for it when I put the review together. Um, I don't, I don't think most people, should, even if it were not extremely limited, and even if it were not five hundred dollars, I don't think that most people should get it. I'm not sure that I need this shoe. It, I, I, because, yeah, it for me it seemed to be best somewhere in between threshold and five k pace. Like it seems to be a really great ten k racing shoe for me. I think. Um, I'm still thinking that I might try it for my half marathon. So I don't know that I'll run it again from now until Houston half marathon. That's my next race on my calendar. I mean, I have Chicago marathon, but I'm not racing that. But I have um, Houston half. Um, and that might be a good place to run in it. Because it was great at my marathon effort, but I don't feel like it was, you know, like the card said, like it's intended for runners with, with a PR of at least like three to three and a half hours. I don't, I'm not sure it's really meant for me. It felt the best at, when I went faster. So, Stevie seventy six says, "Did you, did I wear the Evo one to the grocery store?" Uh, no, I did not wear the Evo one to the grocery store. Uh, you know what? Because like I felt even bad warming up in the shoe, and then I timed, I measured out the workout so that it would pretty much end as close to my car as possible. I didn't even do a cool down today. I just went straight from like the last like ninety second recovery to the car. That was my cool down ninety seconds because I just felt it felt so wasteful not that I cared that much about like, you know, dollars per mile kind of thing, but like doing a 12 minute warm up. I even cut my warm up short because I was like this, I can't be doing warm up paces in it. But here, oh, here's one thing I do want to show you guys. Here's what it looks like um, after I, well, after one run. So like quite a bit of discoloration on, on the foam, which is, in, which I would expect, you know, um, this liquid rubber, very squeaky, very squeaky. By the end of the run, a lot of that squeakiness had toned down, but like anytime I hit like a, a patch of rubber that wasn't as buffed already, then it got squeaky again. Very squeaky shoe, but interesting and very interesting. Uh, Drew's, Drew's gonna wear his around at TRE. <laughs> Just make everyone mad. Uh, yeah. Robert Krieger wants to know what the rubber tastes like after one run. It probably tastes like the roads of, or that was actually in Prairie Grove. So probably tastes like the roads of Prairie Grove. <laughs> uh, JC says he's considering Houston half or full. So if so, we'll arrive a day earlier to catch the Kaboos Run Club shakeout. Yeah, we'll, I will do something. Um, I mean, I'll see if someone wants, if there's a brand that wants to do something together. Um, last year I just popped around, uh, a couple of different shakeout runs. So that's, so I may be able to do the same thing. Mm. Vanessa says, why is it so smooth? It's like the shoe version of a hairless cat. I think it's more like racing slicks and they wanted to put like the thinnest amount of rubber on it possible. And so, um. It's interesting that the rubber has discolored already too, because it used to be like a candy lacquer black, and now it's like a gray. So, interesting. Mm, all right. Daniel Burton says, I think that shoe is for the elite runners. Yes, I think so. I mean, I don't think there's a lot of shoes that we actually get to see that are not intended for the public, right? Because like, if the shoes that are really intended for just elite runners, I think just live and die in proto land. They might get used for a race. They might say that, oh, it's a prototype, but it's maybe a customized shoe for a specific athlete. I think that happens, um, but I don't, but it might be like, for like, I don't know anything about Emily Sisson's shoes, but my understanding is that she has a modified SE pacer that she likes to run in. And so like, that's a shoe that a pro can run in, I'm guessing. Like if they, re re I want it, I wanna run in it, I wanna test it. But like, if they released it, it probably wouldn't be great for the average person to run in. And I think that's kind of like what we have here in this shoe. Um, I think that it's gonna, I think that, a runner that is a little bit faster than me 
is really going to benefit from the shoe. Or maybe if you have a slightly different foot strike than I do. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to wrap my head around like how I really think about the shoe. Part of me is like, is this a shoe for more hamstring dominant runners? Um, because that there's sort of certain times where it just feels like the shoe is just like melting through butter, like a knife through butter, you know? Um, it's never gave me a power sensation. It never gave me a speed sensation. It just gave me, when it was working well, it gave me like an ease. It just made everything easy. And like, I just felt like I could keep pressing and pressing and pressing and pressing until my legs started to like, not give out, but like, then it was just like, lactic in my legs you know so this is like a unique experience where like it's like your feet disappeared and it was just then you were just like a pair of lungs and legs with no feet does that make sense i don't know if that makes sense i'm rambling but that's kind of like what i was feeling it was really i think i have like something on my eye here like a fuzz or something um but yeah it was it was a really very very unique shoe um, uh, Stevie 76 says, I want Floberg to run with the OTQ women at Chicago. Is he gonna? I mean, he's running a 240. He's trying to go sub 240. I mean, why wouldn't he run with the 238 group? I feel like, um, that's the group he should be running with. What's going on with my eye over here, guys? I feel like there's like something like stuck in my eyelashes or something. I'm not sure what that is. All right. It's like, like, I see it on camera, but I also see it in my eye too. I don't know what's happening. Uh, super Injit says, are they super hard to get on like other Adidas shoes? It was impossible to put on. The, the, the tongue, the closest thing that I can describe, it's like putting rice paper on. Like have you made spring rolls before? You know, you dip it in water and then you put some vegetables and like shrimp inside and then you roll it. it the tongue is like that, I'm trying to put your foot in it. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Brian Albrecht says, uh, Floberger said he hates running in groups. Uh, of course, the three-hour pace group is different size than the OTQ group. Yeah, I think that the, is he in that corral with the American development where he can run with the OTQ women? Because I feel like the OTQ women are in a, the, a different corral. But I don't, yeah, I don't know. I've, I haven't checked out his latest video. But yeah, it, I think that group would be a lot smaller. I think he'll appreciate it, you know, running with that group. Matt Legrand says, you know what? I started following that Flowbird guy for camera stuff and then he turned into a runner. And he says, it's perfect. I think I, th I think that's how I found Eric too. I think I found him because he was like, oh, a Chicago guy and he does all this camera stuff. I th and then I was like, oh, is he running too? I think that's how I, I'm not sure if I found him running first or, camera first. I I don't remember. I don't remember. Mm. Let's see. Let's see what I let's see what you have here. Um uh Gilad Eliahu says, we need you and Ben Parks collaborating collabing for a video while he's in Chicago for the marathon. Well he is going to come to the shakeout on Saturday. Um, so he and Sarah will both be there. He's going to get, he said he's going to get there a little early for people that want to just hang out and say hi. So, um, I'm also going to get there early because I know a lot of people couldn't get tickets. So anyone can run with us, but the pizza place only holds so many people. There's like a, a certain, there's a hard limit at a certain point. Um, and so that's unfortunate. I'm guessing next year, do we need to have a bigger location? Like what's bigger than? bigger than 150 people it's kind of crazy um but uh yeah but if anyone wants to just run together we can certainly do that um and i'll be there early hopefully we get some selfies um the other option to hang out is going to be friday night as well that one is in is in a large location so i think 400 people put five dollars down so they said we raised two thousand bucks um for the chicago greater food depository Chicago, greater Chicago food depository. I always say the words in the wrong order. Um, yeah. So, um, that's another option. That one, I don't think, I think, I don't think there's going to be a limit on that because that space is gigantic. If it's the space that I'm thinking of, 
it's super huge. Like they hold events for there for like the Chicago half marathon. And last year, like there was like, it was a shared space that like ultra rabbit, UFOs, Theraga, like a bunch of groups, fleet feet all shared. So it, uh, that's a very big space. Um, Alf Vox says, did Asefa already run in a, in a second version of the shoe? My understanding is that she has a version of the shoe with a more like a continental rubber outsole. Um, and so not the liquid rubber, but the continental rubber. I don't think it's, my understanding is it's not a different version of the shoe. But I mean, like, what are we counting as a version? I mean, if Adidas can take the Primex at a 10 mil drop, and then make the Primex strong at an 8.5 millimeter drop and not call it a version two, then, you know, we're definitely in same version category territory here. So. Richard Williams says, doesn't a world record shoes have to be available for general purpose? Uh, that was originally the rule and then it kind of changed to, I think that's more practical too. Um, but I also just felt like the brands just really, really hated it. So yes and no, I'm not sure what the exact uh, parameters of it are anymore. Cause like, there's like a clock, you can run an issue as a prototype, but you have like a year from the time the prototype is out before you can, you have to release it or you can't run in that prototype anymore. But then I guess if you just make a new prototype, then does it start a new clock? I never really know. So like, I just feel like the way that that rule is now, it pretty much doesn't mean that much to me anymore. But it does seem that a lot of the brands are getting shoes ready for the Olympics. So the timing for a lot of shoes for next year is gonna be very closely tied to Olympics. So, there's some part of it that still applies to them, I guess. I'm not really sure. Your juror says best non elite race shoe. I would my my PR is in the Meta Speed Sky Plus. I love that one. That's my favorite. Mm. Drew says the Acefa version is supposedly the one releasing in November. Unconfirmed. Ooh, now we're spreading rumors here. Oh boy, Drew. Is it the same shoe, just a different outsole though? That's what I want to know. Kurt says he's going to be here in Chicago Friday in the morning and we'll be at the Friday night meetup. And the Saturday went sold out super fast. Unsure about Sunday, slight pulling calf and bruised ribs from last week. Ugh. Oh no. All right. Well, it'll be good to see either way, Kurt, though. Hopefully that resolves itself quickly, though. Um, super Injit wants to know was my PR in Tokyo? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Auto VV says, are you going to do something similar for New York Shake Out or will it be just bagels? I have no idea. Uh, I will be doing an event. It'll be Friday night. I think there'll be food and there might be beer at that one. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I don't do a lot of, I don't like to do event planning, guys, to be honest with you. That's why I love working with brands because they have people who love working on events and that's their job that I can be like, hey, I have an idea. And they'd be like, I got it. And then they'll say, hey, here's what we thought up. And I'll be like, oh, that's a lot of planning you guys did. That's great. So I'm not sure. It'll be more, I think it'll be more than bagels. It, but Otto, here's the question. If it's only bagels, are you not coming? <laughs> is, that the, is that the deciding factor? You're like, I don't know. I like Kofuzi and the Kofuzi Run Club and all, but I ain't going for just a bagel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, Daniel Burton says, are you still thinking about running the Rose Bowl half? If I do, I don't know, like it won't, the Rose Bowl half, my understanding of that course, it's not a PR kind of course. My understanding is that it's hilly. So I would like to go run it. I don't know that it's still be, I think it will be two weeks after Houston. Houston is what I'm targeting for, um, for PR purposes. Mm, cannabis culture tech life says oh snap 400 people for the meet and greet see yeah well there's 400 people are coming to the event there's a shakeout run beforehand then there's the meet and greet um you can come to whichever portion you want but um 
it's with Fleet Feet, Rabbit, and me. And so like, like when we did the, I did the shakeout run in Boston with Rabbit, like a lot of people came. I'm confident that not everyone was there for me, you know? So it was like the, the you know, like we'll still be able to hang out and everyone else would be like, who's this guy, Kofuzi? I don't know, but it's nice to have like a place to kind of, for rabbit people to kind of like congregate, for fleet feet people to congregate. So it'll be, it should be fun. Yeah. Steve Singer says, is the Chicago Marathon near your home? It was, I used to live right on the course, um, but now that we're in the suburbs, it's not. Mm. Super and just says he would go to the shakeout, a shakeout run just for bagels. For a New York City bagel, I'll go for a run, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Steve Zabrowski says, Co, where's your Saturday run with time? The details are in the Kofuzi Run Club Strava group. Um, it's sold out technically, but if you guys just want to join for the run, anyone can join the run. Uh, we're going to start meeting around the Bean in Millennium Park. There's some renovation going on, construction going on there. So I'm not exactly sure, but like it'll be in that general area. Um, and then we'll run along the lakefront up to uh, Lou Malnati's Pizza in the Gold Coast. So about three miles, if you don't get lost. There's only one really tricky part. And that's when you have to cross back underneath, under Lakeshore Drive to get over to the pizza place. But what I'm planning to do is, I think I'm gonna drive in and park near the pizza place and then go over to the spot where the turn is. And I'll bring some of my kids sidewalk chalk and I'll draw a big arrow on the sidewalk to let people know this is where to turn. That's what I'm thinking. Cause last year we lost a couple of people. They eventually made it. And then we did have to send a search party out for some people, I think. So I don't want that to happen again. And if anyone wants to volunteer to be a um, pace group leader, I would appreciate that. Let me know. Just make sure you have like the, either the route memorized or put it into your watch so you can know where that turn is. You know what I mean? Zach Apley says, hey, Co, would you use Magic Speed 3 for long runs or would you say it's more for speed work only? I'd say it's more for speed work only. It's pretty firm, in my opinion. You know. Mm. Oh, Kurt says, oops, I'll be in there in New York in there in New York for sure, is what I meant. meant. Hope I can catch you on the 5K course again as well. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. That was fun. I, I love watching the USATF 5K championships in New York over New York Marathon weekend. That's fun. Uh, Eliza says, you know what? We were there for you in Boston Co at the, the Rabbit Shakeout. I appreciate that. I appreciate you guys. Uh, yeah. Frank says, the bean is being renovated. The bean is fine. It's the um, it's all the tiles that are around the bean that are, some of them are being, a lot of them being replaced and refurbished. So they're, I guess refurbishing the little plaza that the bean sits on. Gert Van Deventer says, Cape Town Marathon in the future? You know, I just saw something on Instagram this morning. I think it was Instagram or maybe it was YouTube this morning about the Cape Town Marathon that I think Adidas is doing. Because it's I th I'm guessing it's an Adidas race. But I don't know if this is true or how you sign up for this. But I saw it on an Instagram account and it said, the ad was, if you start and finish, it was very specific. You have to start and finish the Cape Town Marathon in a pair of Adidas and they will pay you 2000 Rand. I have no idea how much a Rand is worth, but apparently that's the promotion. I don't know how much it costs to enter the Cape Town Marathon, but I'd love to run in South Africa at some point. I don't know if Cape Town is gonna be it though um i'm definitely paying close attention to it though because you know it's either going to be cape town or sydney for that seventh star you know um yeah so i'm very interested to see how people do for that how that race does this year mm. Lalom P says, Featherstone Nutrition Carb Calculator has me at 50, 500, 
560 grams of carbs per day for three days. I have to eat 11 bagels every day. Are you sure that's right? That seems like a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, 11 bagels a day doesn't sound super, super crazy. Because a bagel is like 50 grams of carbs, right? I mean, it depends on the size of the bagel, but like, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, that seems like a lot. I would double check the math on that. But then if it that's if that's it, then just like eat o oatmeal and bagels, just alternate oatmeal and bagels or put like dip a bagel in oatmeal. That's how you're going to have to get there. Um, PJ says, did you see the bandit Chicago capsule? I get the concept 23 Chicago bold, et cetera. Not sure. I love the singlet design not as much as I like the Boston singlet they did. Um, I saw that they were doing stuff. Um, I saw that they like, uh, I knew they were doing a bulls theme. I don't know if any, I think, uh, I think they made me a member. So like on their Instagram, like that they're close friends stories. I see those. And so like, there was a whole saga with their photo shoot with that too. But you know, they made it happen. They made it done. I think it, I thought it turned out really great. Here's my problem with it though. And I, I there's kind of like a plus and you know, on the one hand and on the other, the main thing is it's like, I'm, I'm from New Jersey. I grew up a Knicks fan. I've always hated the bulls. That's how I grew up. I've never put on a pair of Jordans. I've never worn Michael Jordan, anything ever. And um, Bandit is born in Brooklyn, right? So it's like a New York brand. I mean, I guess everyone at Bandit is like 10, 15 years younger than me. So maybe they don't have the same animus. You know, we don't have the, no, they don't have the same Xavier McDaniel angst against Chicago Bulls like I do, you know, growing up. But like, I have a hard time with like a New York brand. I, I get it, it's very clever. 2023 for 23. Yeah. All, all great. And I think it, the execution was really good. I just have a problem with that. I'm not going to wear it, you know? Um, but, um, on the other hand, Bennett has trying to become a global brand. So like they're trying to not be so provincial. So yeah, I, I see that there's, you know, expanding and exploring and letting the city inspire them. So I think that's good too. But for me, hard pass on Chicago Bulls things, you know? <laughs> Season fan says, I thought you were from Chicago. Well, here's the thing. Chicago is the kind of place where you could live here for 19, li I mean, I lived in Chicago, I had a Chicago, you know, zip code. And now we live in the suburbs, but I lived in Chicago for 18 years. You know, my kids went to CPS. Kids were born in Northwestern on the Mag Mile, you know? Like we lived in Chicago. I didn't have a car for many of most of those years. We walked, took the CTA. That's how we live. Most people would not call me a Chicagoan, not people from Chicago. It's, it's one of those places, you know? So like, I'm not, I'm, no one has really thought that I was from Chicago. I've lived here a long time though. <laughs> Um, uh, Cobalt Blue says, Co, the offer for that South Africa, so the Cape Town Marathon, it, it, from Adidas, it's for South Africans. So I, I couldn't go there and get 2,000 Rand. They're hoping to get as many citizens as possible to run the marathon. I think it's because one of the, like, I don't, and here's the thing, I need to figure out what this checklist is. But in order to like, to complete your application to become the seven star, like you have to have like a certain number of people running the race in the years leading up to it. And so that's why like Sydney Marathon went from like 12,000 two years ago to like 21,000 this year. And so they have to show that they can handle a race of a certain size. So that must be why they're doing that. They don't have the numbers right now. Oh. Uh, Gilad Elias says, wow, basketball co is kind of toxic. I, I grew up a basketball fan in the 90s. 
it was a different time. I, I, I was in high school when they took away the hand check. So it was just a dip, like defense was very different. Basketball was very different back when I watched it. <laughs> uh, Delta Money says, what race day shoe for Chicago for PR under, under $300? How much is the endorphin elite cost? I like that one. Meta Speed Sky Plus is definitely under 300. Adios Pro 3, Endorphin Pro 3. Uh, those are all going to be some good choices for you. <laughs> I, I think it's funny that you guys are like astonished about the basketball stuff. Ba basketball was basketball was hard nosed back then. I mean, I'm not. I, I haven't watched basketball in probably 15 years, but yeah. C Town fan says, which makes sense. C Town fan says, I'm a Super Sonics fan. Yeah, there you go. I mean, Gary Payton, Sean Kemp, that was a team. That was a team. Stevie Seven Six is the '90s golden age of basketball. I think it was. I think it was. Super says, but you know what? Everything was toxic in the '90s, pretty much. Pretty. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. <sighs> All right. Sleeve Singer says, "Box." Yeah, I think it's box time. We were going on a big tangent in the basketball. All right. So I think a lot of you guys have already guessed what this is. It's a package from Saucony. Um, which they were able to get this to me really quick. Sometimes it's like I'll reach out to them and be like, hey, can you guys send me the Triumph 21 RFG? And then I see everyone else gets it and then they kind of forget about me for a little while. And I'm just like, what's happening? But this, I send an email and I got a response like the next day and then like another day later it was here. So this is a Saucony Sinister, which is interesting. It's in a Saucony Originals box, which Saucony Originals, that's where you get like the jazz. So I don't know if it's just that this box is the right size, but like it says sinister on here. So let's see what's inside. This shoe is very pretty. I got to tell you. This is the Saucony Sinister. It's all power run PB, no plate, extremely lightweight. Uh, in terms of grams, it's within 10%, I think. I don't remember the exact number. That's why I'm saying it so vaguely. It's within 10% of what uh, the Evo Pro is. And it doesn't feel as crazy light as the Evo, the Evo 1. Um, but it does feel incredibly light. This outsole reminds me of the uh, that Reebok shoe. What was that one called? That one was like $250, $150, and it was like never available for sale. But that one, it kind of reminds me of that stuff on the outsole. I like it. Um, very lightweight, see-through upper. Can you see my finger? Yeah. See, this is not one. Although I feel like this one's got an insole. I feel like you could go sockless on this and just really gross everyone out with your toes coming through this one. But this is supposed to be more of their 5K, 10K racer. Um, and it feels great in hand. I mean, I'm thinking it's not a stability shoe in any kind of way, just like a race flat. Um, very excited to put some miles on this and kind of compare it to the Evo 1. Because um, they're coming in at the same weight. I think the stack heights are quite a bit different. This is using a beaded Piba foam, I believe. Um, yeah, so here we go. Saucony Sinister. Mm -mm. Calvin says it's super narrow, perhaps the most narrow shoe I've ever tried. It doesn't strike me as like unusually narrow at this point, but we'll have to see. Um, I do like that it's like this like ripstop transparent material, and then it's got a knit tongue. You guys know I love the knit. I'm the only one left that loves knit, I feel like. Uh, Daniel Burton says, no plate. Nope, no plate. Um, Alf Dickens says, what's the drop? I don't remember. I think Adam Fierce has a pair. He might know off, offhand. Um, but I don't remember all the time. I just remember it being like, that looks like a fun shoot that I should definitely compare to both the Topo Cyclone 2 and the Takumi Sen. Um, and I was like, eventually I'll get to it. And then I kind of forgot about it for a while. But then the Evo 1 reminded me. So, yeah. 
Adam says he doesn't find it narrow. It's a flexible top and it fits well. That's what I'm hoping for. So, um, yeah. Kim says the lacing system is very, very good on these. Nice. I'm liking what I hear from you guys so far. And uh, everyone wants to know this or the Takumi Sen. Frank says that's the comparison we want, so Sinister versus Takumi. Yeah, I think that's going to be like the natural comparison point. Um, but you know what I'll tell you is that the Evo one kind of reminded me of like uh, a double stack Takumi. So like fun and lightweight like the Takumi Sen is, but it definitely you can feel that there's more stack height in it. In it. The Evo One foam, the Electric Pro that's there is different. It's not as dense as the Takumi Sen. So it's, it's more airy, but it has a similar, it still feels like Lightstrike Pro. So yeah, lots of thoughts, lots of thoughts all kind of swirling in my head today. Um, yeah. Ah, Drew says, is the float ride run fast? Yeah, Drew, did you ever run in that shoe, the float ride run fast? I never had a chance to run in that one. Um, I remember I would keep getting all these, I was so mad at that shoe for a long time because I would keep getting all these emails from Reebok saying like 50% off, like 50, maybe sometimes it was like a weird email, like 50% off the entire website. No asterisk, no like exclusions apply. It would just be 50% off the entire website. And they would, then you'd go to the website from the email and it would say 50% off the entire website. And then you go and try to put that shoe in the in the in the cart, and then it just would not apply fifty percent. It wouldn't be like, sorry, this one doesn't, you know, it just wouldn't. And then like a month later, it'd be like thirty percent off all shoes, no asterisks, no little indication saying some exclusions apply. And then if you go to even the shoe, the shoe doesn't say like on Adidas. Like if you look at the Prime X Two Strong right now, it'll say like you know like promotions not applicable to this shoe you know that all makes sense so i was so mad at the float ride run fast for a long time i hold i don't i like to think that i don't hold grudges but i guess maybe i do mm -hmm. all right as far as the drop adam says that the saucony says it's 2519 so this is low in modern standards so 19 millimeters in the forefoot. It looks like it has a pretty like early rocker that's very gradual, similar to the Evo one. Although this one, you could see it's just so much more. But it starts kind of like earlier back behind the pads of the feet. Um, interesting. These shoes are very different but I feel like I'm going to end up using them similarly. And Drew said he loved that float ride run fast. Whatever happened to that? What was the foam that they used in it? Where did it go? They're not using it anymore in anything, are they? I just, you know, I don't know. Why did, why did that good shoe go away? Calvin says, uh, it's low, but the foam is protective. Very unique feeling like you're running on carpet or something. Interesting. I like that. I like that. I don't know why that sounds so appealing. Like running on carpet? Hmm. Uh, Leo says, is the new 1080 th th version 13 more of a daily trainer or a max gun shoot? It's more of a daily trainer. That video will come out on Thursday. So tomorrow I started putting it together. I filmed it before I went to Italy. And I thought that maybe I would release it last Monday. But I was like, no, oh, I should do the Italy stuff first. So it's going to come out Thursday. Adam says that the shoe is super flexible, so the rocker doesn't matter. Your feet make the shoe flex where your foot does. OK, well, that's, see, that's a benefit of some of these thinner midsoles. I do feel like we're going to start seeing, I've said this before. I don't think it's the first time I said it. Like, as much as I love jumbo stack height shoes, I think that we're going to start seeing people trying to do more with less and not just give you less cushion, but like, I think the foam technology, you know what I mean? It's going to be like for a while, batteries just got bigger and bigger. And then there was advancements in battery technology and then they got small kind of that thing. Eric Vensky says, I wonder why Saki doesn't do more with the freedom line. 
mid stack with all power run plus seems better like a better Convara. i ran in with version three and it was great i think that's a great question and um every i regret not reviewing some of those earlier um what are they called freedoms um, because now it's become like a like a crossfit shoe which makes very little i'm thinking is it only because the name of the shoe is freedom that crossfit likes it and so now they have to change the shoe for the people that are actually buying it i don't i don't know because there's a liberty as well and the liberty was like a stability version of the freedom wasn't it i if i'm i don't i don't know i don't know if they still make that shoe but like in theory like you've got the triumph which is made out of power run plus and then if you have something that is also power run plus but a little bit faster that should be a pretty fun shoe i don't yeah i don't know i don't know calvin says all i want i just want an adidas shoe with full light Trek pro and no plate or rods like the invincible adidas please I mean, I think we pretty much have it with the Takumi. I think the Takumi Sen is the closest you're going to get, or the Evo Pro, the Evo One, because I think there's something in there. But every time I see a picture of like the rod system that's in here, it it looks like. I mean, you can't see it, but the rod system that's in this shoe, it reminds me of like a fish spatula, and I feel like it's as slop floppy as a fish fish spatula. I don't think it's doing much. So this might be it, but this is a different kind of Light Strike Pro. It just feels it's less dense. It's airier than Light Strike Pro. Because I think that's the whole benefit of the non compression molding. Gilad Elias says, Will you review the Sinister or is it too late? I will review the Sinister. That's why I got it. That's why I asked for it. Yeah. Mm. Super and just says, I bought my wife a pair of freedoms just for daily shoes because she likes Saucony, but didn't want a shoe that makes her look taller. Yeah, my, my, when, <laughs> does she like it? Maybe I'll get one of those for my wife. Cause uh, she never likes the shoes that I get for her. Uh, right now she's saying that the cumulus that I bought her are bothering her knees. So, so now she's been, she dug out an old pair of shoes that I told her she needs to throw away cause they're so old. I think they're a pair of rides like Saucony ride, it might be like 12 or something like that. Which when I first gave those to her, she hate, she said she hated them. So she only she never likes the new things that I get her. And her main thing is she doesn't want running shoes that look like running shoes. Uh, Auto VV says, Co, what are you gonna be for Halloween? I'm gonna be Jinx the cat from Hocus Pocus. We're doing a family costume this year. The kids want to be the um, what do they call it? The something sisters, the three witches. Yeah. Be Jinx the cat. Raj Kumar, Raj Shinji says, Coach K, I can't wait for your Evo review marathon question. Thinking about the Baltimore marathon. Only did two long runs. Um, should I go for the full? Thanks. Um, the Baltimore marathon is very hard. It's very hilly. I didn't know that. So all my training was on Chicago's lakefront. Very, very flat. It's a tough course. So it really depends on what your goals and expectations are. If you want to go experience the course, do the full marathon, um, and enjoy a race, then I say go for it. I think that you're going to have to maybe adjust some of your paces if your runs haven't been that long. Uh, long runs haven't been that long. So that's that. But like... Um, but they also, it's the Baltimore Running Festival. So there's a whole series of races, aren't there? So you can always, I don't know how easy it would be to, to transfer to another distance. I don't know. Super and Jit says, his wife loves the freedom. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll get some of those. I do think that she needs slight, st either stability or something firmer. I'm starting to narrow down. She has a, an impossible time expressing to me what she does or doesn't like about a shoe she could just tell me that this she likes this one or she doesn't you know maybe i'm not listening critically enough i don't know but i'm starting to suspect i really i'm thinking about taking her to the crystal lake running shoe store i don't i don't know what it's i forget what it's called 
I think it's called Runner's Depot. The place where they only stock ghosts and Clifton's. And I'm thinking about picking up a pair of ghosts. But maybe the freedom, because I do think even though it's the freedom and it used to be like it called the freedom because it had zero stability whatsoever, super neutral. But uh, I think it does because now it's a CrossFit shoe. I think it has some stability elements in the midfoot. I think she might really like that. We'll see. Mast Runner says, I take the Emily Sisson approach to the marathon. I'd prefer lighter weight over extra cushion in a marathon. Yeah, I take the non-elite approach. I take extra cushion over the lighter weight. But, yeah. I think that, like, we're going to start seeing more shoes. I think, I think, I suspect we're going to start seeing more shoes that make that trade. Mm. Ah, the Sanderson sisters. Sleeve singer, that's right. The Sanderson sisters. Yeah. Mm. Time to Run says, my wife did that a couple years ago. She dug out an old pair of Nikes, except now she loves the Adazero SLs. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I, I wonder if, no, I don't think, maybe my wife would like that one. I don't know. Oh, wait, Binks. Yeah, the cat was Thackeray Binks. Uh, I thought it was, yeah, Binks. So I have like a cat costume that I'll wear. The only problem is every time you wear a costume like that, there's never pockets. So it's super annoying. <laughs> Mm. Shannon says, Cole only thinks it's a tough course because I can't live down that my dad beat me there. He, my dad did beat me there. Um, yeah, he beat me by like 20 minutes. It's a tough, it's a tough, it's very, it's so hilly. It's so hilly. <laughs> All right. Um, here's the thing. Speaking of that Boston, that Baltimore marathon, because I ran a 4.43 there, and that has me thinking. Yesterday, I did some math. The official number of lifetime or like the entire over the history of the Chicago Marathon finishers is in the 967,000s. That means that someone that who comes in, at, I think the number that I came up when I did the math was the person who comes in in 32,000th and 25th place on Sunday will be the 1 millionth Chicago Marathon finisher. Now they're saying that 47,000 people currently have bibs for the Chicago Marathon, which I think will be a record for the Chicago Marathon. I think the last record was like 45 or 42 or something like that. So I looked up last year, which was a hot year, last year's results. To come in 32,000th and 25th, 32,000th and 25th in 2022 would have been a five and a half hour marathon. Now I'm thinking there's going to be like, there's like more than 10,000 more people entered this year than last year. If 10, there's 10,000 more, I don't know what that does to the number. So I don't know what pace to run if I do run Chicago. If it, cause if it's going to be good weather, there's more people who knows what that pace distribution is of those new people. So I'm not sure what pace to run if I do run. So, um, so I'm thinking maybe I might want to run like four hours, maybe four. I don't want to, I don't, I don't think I can be out there for five and a half hours. I, I, that's a long time. I, I don't know how to run that long any, anymore. You know, what, you know what I mean? So I'm going to, I think maybe four hours or four and a half hours if I run it. If the weather's really, really good, if it stays this good, I'll probably not run and then I'll watch the race. But I don't know. Super Engine says, like, you know, if 47,000 have bibs, do, do like 39,000 show up? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure how it goes. I mean, I could do it. I could just stop somewhere and drink beers for a little bit, you know, um, and then run the rest. But uh, here's the other thing. My longest run in a long time has been like 15 miles. So like, I actually, I mean, will it be hard? I don't know. I, I don't think, I think I could, I could be okay. I don't know. Hmm. 
Yeah, Adam says stop for beers along the way. Yeah, maybe I'll get a pizza at my lo- neighborhood pizza spot. The course goes right by it. Actually, that's not a bad idea. It'd be like mile seven or eight. Uh, the pizza place won't be open yet. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, Mark says drink all the Malort. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. So like, Frank says, my goal pace for a Marine Corps Marathon is 13.45. So I feel like I, that'll be, yeah. I mean, what time does that end up being? Is that like a four and a half hour? No, that's like a, is that a five hour marathon? I don't know. Hmm. So we'll see. I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'll do in that situation. I'm definitely because I signed up for the VIP tent. So if I end up doing it, I'm going to eat a giant breakfast before I go, and I'll stop, I guess, at all the port, port, porta potties. Uh, video says for the Chicago one millionth finisher, can the app show you real time current finish position? Just camp out at the finish line and wait. I don't think so, but so um, the Chicago Marathon has said I, I didn't go to this meeting, but uh, Lindsay Hine was telling me that she went to it. Uh, it was a virtual like media meeting and they talked about the race organizers talked about um the million finisher and they're planning something for the million finisher so i don't know how they're going to keep track but i'm wondering if like if i'm coming up mount roosevelt and then like i see like a crowd of people you know what i mean if i had on a shirt that says one million finisher like will they like hurry 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 you know like pass these two people like i don't know i don't i don't, I don't know how that'll work so um yeah, yeah, i don't know I don't, I don't know i don't know what i do or maybe i just run four because i'm thinking you know what i'll do is like what are you guys running who's running in the four hour four thirty? like let's run just let's run together that'll be i'd rather do that than like be like huh run a little bit drink a beer you know i don't want that that'd be fun but you know, I don't know. Yeah, Andrew Scott says it's a good call though. Being on your feet for longer than what you train for would be tough. That yeah, I'm just not. I mean, I've been on feet. Like I just spent, you know, a couple of days in the mountains. We were on feet all day, so I guess it'd just be like that. Run a little bit, rest a little bit. I don't know, but I'll just run with you guys. Steve Zabrowski says I'll be there four forty-five to five. Come with me, be my pacer. Maybe we'll do that. If I'm not sure, you know. If, it depends on the weather, you know. Um, <laughs> getting a one million finisher shirt made ahead of time is a galaxy brain move. Trick the organizers. I mean, should I do that? I feel like it, I don't know if I could get a shirt made fast enough. Maybe I go to the local shirt place and be like, how much to make one shirt? I don't know. <sighs> so we'll see. Um, Luis says run with Martha. What's Martha running? Hmm. Yeah. Stephanie says, let's definitely plan a four hour Cofamsey Chicago marathon. I feel I would like to I I think I would enjoy running a four hour marathon. But let's see. We'll have to we can just we got a couple more days. We can discuss it, you know. Hmm. Auto VV says it'll make a for a great and different video. You'll be able to capture some things that you wouldn't when running all out. For sure. I mean I kind of I kind of do, did that last year, you know. Um, but like the other thing that I was thinking, and this is what ties it back to the Baltimore marathon discussion we were having. What if I try to run the same time as my first marathon? That was like a 443, 448. I feel like that will get me reasonably close, I think, to being the 1 millionth finisher. I don't know exactly where that would put me, but yeah, I think pretty close. Hmm. Luis Becerra says, and find some Patrick Ewing shoes to run the marathon. <laughs> uh, I don't know if Patrick Ewing shoes would make it. They're just so old at this point. You know. Stephanie says, what corral are you in? I honestly don't know. I think I'm corral B. I'm usually corral B for the Chicago Marathon. 
Common says you can run, walk, and interview lots of people along the way at different paces to get their feel and stories for the race. That's an interesting idea. Ooh, Auto VV says, or make it a challenge and aim for 430 without looking at your watch once. But if I just stay by the 430 pacer, then I could probably just do that. Um, Shan says, just hold a Kofamzy co pace sign and run with a big herd of us. I feel like that would be kind of fun. Yeah, CV76 says, clickbait title. Was I the 1 million Chicago Marathon finisher? That's exactly what I'm going to be putting on the video. Like, can I be, you know? So, um, yeah. C Town fans says, what do you win as a one million finisher? Nothing but a lifetime bragging rights. Because it would have been calling my shop back when Twitter was still a thing. If you go look at the, the profile still exists at Word of Co. But it says striving, it's been, I haven't been active and I don't know, I deleted it. When did Elon Musk go really, really crazy? I deleted, like right after he bought it is when I like deleted it off my phone. I think the account's still there. If it hasn't been hacked at this point. But um, the profile says, aspiring to be the Chicago Marathon's one millionth finisher. So it's something that I've been eyeballing for a long time. <sighs> we'll see. We'll see. All right. Um, yeah. I think that's a good place to leave it for today, guys. Um, yeah, tomorrow we'll do, uh, should we do Chicago Marathon Trivia? Let's do Chicago Trivia. We'll do a Chicago Marathon Trivia kind of thing tomorrow. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll do something. That'll be fun. We'll play a game. Uh, same time as today, 1 p.m. Central Time. Hopefully, see you then. In the meantime, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.